Millions of people living their lives. People we pass in the street and barely even notice. But in those crowds are ordinary men and women with extraordinary stories to tell. Stories of heroism and hope, of beating the odds and blazing a trail. Those moments of chance that change lives forever. In this series, I'll be traveling across the country, coming face to face with people you may never have met, but whose experiences you'll never forget. These are Welsh Lives. Life doesn't always run smoothly. We all face challenges and difficult times. But when life knocks you down, it's how you respond, recover, and even grow that's important. There's resilience in human beings to take what life throws at us and to turn it into something positive, to find peace and acceptance. And it can make for a remarkable life. For sculptor Nick Elphick, art has shaped his life, both professionally and personally. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. <laughs> I was just sculpting my dad at the moment, trying to get the hair back on him. <laughs> oh wow, this is fascinating. So this is your dad? Yeah, I've just started again on him. He passed away about two years ago at Parkinson's because he'd been ill for so long. I couldn't, it was, it was hard to remember the real him and it was a real struggle so, and I actually really struggled, um, uh, you know, I was going through a lot of tor torment at the time um, and I actually had to stop sculpting him and um, I actually sort of had to try and find some help about the issues I was dealing with through it and I ended up, you know, really quite um, in a really dark place eventually. When I'm not able to even make my artwork because I can't find myself, then I know, you know. Throughout Nick's life, art has been an outlet, a way of dealing with what life has thrown at him. And it's brought him extraordinary success. I never decided to be an artist. I don't really like these labels of being an artist or a sculptor. I never did it to make a business. I never did it to make you know, money. I just did it because that's what I wanted to do. And that's, that's how I had to act subconsciously. My language is, is sculpture. You know, you can't make poetry without being able to understand language. And, and so my, my language, you know, to be able to say something was in, in sculpture. So that's been everything to me and been able to help me find myself. Okay, so take me all the way back. How did this start for you, the whole journey? Well, I mean, basically, let's just say basically at school I was extremely uh, dyslexic. Um, I really struggled with school um, from a young age and um, went to a lot of schools. And uh, it wasn't easy for me and, and um, <clears throat> I struggled with myself really. I didn't have any direction and I was quite self-destructive. I used to sketch constantly. I used to hide in just sketching and drawing and didn't realise that it was anything special. I just, it was my escape. When I first started drawing, I, I, I remember I had a really bad day at school and I was really struggling and I came home and mum and dad weren't home at the time. I can't remember where they were, but I was very young. And, you know, this strange, it's sort of a hazy memory, but I just remember just acting out. I used to act out quite heavily, so at school I would act out, but this time I thought, right, I'm just gonna draw on the walls in my bedroom, knowing that it would cause an issue, but I just wanted to just let go, and I ended up drawing all over the walls, and I thought, right, I'm gonna have a real telling off, and my mum got home, and she came home, and it was just, that's when it, I think things really changed in my life, was my mum came home and she goes, wow, she was just like, wow, this is amazing, you're so talented, and I was like, what? And it was like, I suddenly had a sense of, I don't know, uh, pride. From Olympians to the Queen, Nick's sculptures have been used to celebrate some of the most iconic people and events. 
And that's a lot of work, a lot of physical effort. Uh, oh yeah, the physical, that, that's it. I mean, doing this, th things at this size is you're up and down. You've got to work on the whole thing at all times, not in one place, constantly stepping back. And I used to think, oh, I must use a serious amount of calories because I've lost about a stone and a half in the last month now. Um, I've got to remember to eat. But this old news story belied a difficult truth about Nick's life. For years, he had struggled with eating disorders and self-worth. Originally, it was like, well, if I try and control how I look, then, you know, I'll be better than I am, you know, and, and didn't realise how much of an issue it was. And I actually got very ill when I was young. I nearly died from anorexia. And then it sort of changed um, into bulimia and, and also body dysmorphia. Um, and thank, thank God for finding St. David's, which helped me sort of find a self-respect and find myself and, and actually found artwork. I was able to sort of um, subconsciously start to work things out through my art um, and actually start to understand why I was the way I was with my, you know, the, my actions and the way I behaved to myself. Um, so it's, it was a massive game changer and I think art has basically saved my life. Nick ended up at St. David's College, a private school in Llandidno. They have a big focus on helping pupils with additional learning needs. Do you know what? It's really nice to be back in this room. This is where I started, you know. This was my art department. I lived in here all the time. It was my safety, my safety place, you know, being in school. Um, and, and I don't know, this, this room changed my life, you know. Just as art was the catalyst for change in Nick, he wants to encourage today's students to find their own creative spark. Right, so, hello. A lot of you here. So um, basically, I, I came to St. David's around about probably 20 years ago. Um, I, in my view, was pretty much a no-hoper. Um, I'd been to a lot of schools, did, you know, basically thrown out of a lot of schools. I was quite angry, I had a few issues, I was struggling with quite serious ADHD and severe dyslexia. I used to think I was lazy and I was worthless and I was stupid, but actually procrastination is very different to being lazy. And I could either choose the issues that I was going through to make me worse and to, to sort of see myself as that person or rise above it and become a better person and St. David's helped me do that. Every child has got a gift. Our job is to find that gift. Nick would be a difficult, challenging child in a school situation because he needs to be uh, in an open environment uh, where he's highly motivated. And it took, it took some time uh, for that to happen. But when he, when he did find his safe place and creative place, which was the art room, everything began to fall together for him and, and his gift then just blossomed. This sculpture is called Self. A gift from Nick to the place where he found his worth. You know, the most difficult thing I think as an artist is the honesty. For me it's very embarrassing to be as honest as I am, but I realise that that is also the thing that gives me strength. Um, and actually helping other people get into the creative world. And again, you know, okay, I'm a sculptor because that's the direction that I've ended up choosing to go down. But, you know, creativity, being an artist isn't about, you know, what it is you do. It's, it's about the way you think and feel. I would say I'm probably the happiest I've ever been in my life because I've, I've, yeah, I've gone down the direction that, that I'm passionate about. It was really cool. Again, I I love art and I kind of feel the same. He said, you know, that you don't need all the stereotypical stuff that school gives you. It means that there's lots more opportunities after school. If I'm feeling a certain way, I will often just put pen on paper or get something that I can create 3D and just kind of do it until I'm happy with it. Or if I'm not happy with it, I can always spin it. And it's just that that's a release of emotion. and. It's a way to kind of healthily cope with how I'm feeling. And for Nick, this school represents the start of his journey to success. 
I still have that thing in my head that I'm never good enough because I'm always going to have that. And that's what probably drives me to, to strive as better and better on all my work. But, but actually, you know, when I look at what I've achieved, I, you know, I've done, I, you know, I've done from the Queen's portrait for the Jubilee, 60 large six foot ones for the Jubilee. I've done the Olympic, you know, four major Olympians for the Olympics. I'm able to make history, you know, alive and, and, and keep history alive. And those things just fill me massively with pride. And also the fact I'm making a really good living as an artist, you know, I bought a house. You know, I never thought I'd have that. I honestly believed when I was a kid before I came here that I would be a tramp. I, I honestly had that in my, in, my, in my mind's eye and I had no self-worth, you know. And now it's, it's weird seeing myself you know, come back here and talk about what, what I've achieved, you know. And it's all come from confidence. Artistically and physically, Nick has made his home here, in Sandidno. Sandidno is like your happy space here? Yeah? yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can say I said my studio here is right in the centre of Sandidno. I can walk to the beach, I've got the mountains, and also I just feel it's my, it's my home, it's where I um, you know, found myself. Um, and it's weird, I just, you know, I lived away for a long time working in the industry and I just felt I had to come back, you know. And it's probably not the best place to, to, to you know, to leak, a, uh, you know, have a living as a sculptor because, you know, down south, down London is probably the best place. But I need, it wasn't about that for me. I needed to come and find creativity and landed now, and North Wales especially. It's just beautiful for creativity. What does art mean to you? It's my life. It's, it's basically, it's kept me alive, it's given me meaning, it's given me direction, you know, it gives me a sense of, sense of who I am and, and pride. Um, it's my language. Without it, I just wouldn't be anything. Really.